Hi, my name is Phil, and this is my wife, Cassie. We just celebrated our sixth wedding anniversary, and uh, we've been attending Vineyard for the past few years. And like many couples our age, young and married, we got to that point where we were deciding, hey, this is time to start our family. And so we were excited, a little nervous, but um, really hopeful about what the next stage in our journey would look like. And then we found ourselves, as many couples do, in the scenario where each month was passing and we weren't getting pregnant. And so, you know, the confident expectation and all the excitement that we had at the beginning started to really fade as each month passed. And we started replacing that hope with fears and doubts, asking questions like, you know, are we ever going to get pregnant? You know, why aren't we getting pregnant? All of our friends, you know, seem to be blessed with children. You know, is there something that we still need to do in order to, you know, become parents? Yeah, we were just kind of doubting, you know, is God choosing not to answer our prayer? Are we not being heard? Where do we fit in his story? What, what does it all kind of mean as it comes together? And we were just kind of grappling with that as time month after month just kept passing. We continued to push on the doctors and we eventually got referred to an infertility specialist. And that was when we got the diagnosis um, that I actually had a syndrome that causes infertility. And so once we found out that she had this syndrome, it was kind of mixed. There was the positive side where we were happy that there was a reason for what we were going through. We knew that, well, that we knew there was a cause. And uh, we also knew there were specific steps that we could take to increase our likelihood and our chances of getting pregnant in the future. But with that also came with the realization that it almost felt like the clock was restarting. We had the thought of, wow, did we just waste these eight months? Um, so it was really a time where we tried to find the hope in the future, but it wasn't always easy. And we knew that God was capable of just touching her, healing her right on the spot, but we also had faith in him working through medicine as well. And so we decided to go through with the treatments each month and um, see how they were progressing. We found that again, month after month, they were failing and um, really were starting to get to a point of not knowing what the next steps were. And I would say, I mean, I struggled with many things throughout the season of infertility, but I really struggled with just feeling like I had been forgotten by God, that I was just really, um, you know, in loneliness and isolation and had been abandoned, whether it was by God or by other people. So then we fast forward to December 1st. We have an appointment with the specialist and we kind of know what the results are going to be, but um, we go and we get an ultrasound done and he tells us, yeah, this month was a failure as well. Your likelihood of conceiving this month is razor thin, probably not possible at all, in my professional opinion. We were just kind of processing, what are we gonna do? Are we going to um, have month of December as one where we're gonna try another round of treatment or are we gonna kind of take a break? That was just a really hard message to hear. Um, we just felt like you know, we had all this hope when we got the diagnosis that, you know, we're going to be able to start these, you know, pretty low level treatments and the doctors were just so optimistic. And then here we were just a couple months in to otherwise really healthy, you know, young individuals. And we felt like we were almost at the end of the rope that our journey had almost kind of started, but then ended at the same time. We decided to take a break from the fertility treatments that month. So that was definitely really tough to process through and another time of kind of grieving that season and what that might mean for our family. Um, but just trying to give up those expectations to the Lord and just really trust Him. And He, I would say in December specifically, um, began to do just a really great work, more than He already had been. Um, he was speaking to both myself and Phil at that time about different things. I felt even early on in the month just to hearing a thought pop in my mind where it's like, have hope, there is hope for you. And so I kind of dismissed it as wishful thinking or maybe that's for the next month. Okay, so we're traveling for Christmas, we're going to my hometown and these thoughts just kind of keep popping in my head. And after a while, the persistence, I say, okay, I'm thick headed, but I'm not that thick headed. <laughs> and um, on Christmas Eve, we decided to have a coffee date and I had, heard these little thoughts throughout the month enough that it built the confidence and gave me the boldness to bring it up with Cassie. 
Now, it was kind of risky because I knew this is really emotionally intertwined in this phase. And so I knew just bringing it up would cause her to get emotional about it. And we try to keep Christmas as happy as possible. It's a joyous time. But nonetheless, I decided, okay, I'm going to share it with her. And so I shared with her that I felt I was hearing from the Holy Spirit that there's reason for us to have hope. I felt even specifically that we should take a pregnancy test the next morning, because wouldn't it be cool if our gift for Christmas was a baby? Yeah, so we're sitting in Starbucks and he tells me this and um, I start crying immediately and then I get a little angry, you know, because it had just been a few weeks since we were at that appointment and the doctor had told us that there was like literally no way that we could get pregnant. And then here we are, you know, my husband's telling me that he thinks it'd be, you know, really cool and he thinks that he's hearing from the spirit, you know, that we should take a pregnancy test the next morning. And so I'm just trying to like receive this and take this all in and I eventually, I guess, accepted it and decided that, you know, I was strong enough to go ahead and take a pregnancy test the next morning. I very well knew that the answer was going to be negative, but, you know, I felt like I was in a good enough place where I could receive another negative and, and be okay. And to be honest, we kind of ended the coffee date and I didn't really think about it at all the rest of the day. Um, and so then the next morning, Christmas morning, I woke up uh, a little bit earlier uh, than Phil before we were going to open presents and I took the pregnancy test and I just kind of sat it down because again I knew the answer and um, I passed it uh, to go to the sink and I took a glimpse of it and I saw a result that I hadn't seen before. It was positive. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> So she comes in the room, she's crying, and my first thought is I ruined Christmas. <laughs> I knew, what had you done, you know, but she quickly turned and let me know that they were tears of joy. Um, she handed me the, the sheet of paper, she handed me the stick, I did the math equation with the pluses and minuses, <laughs> and we were pregnant. We were pregnant. <laughs>